I'm in love with Jesus. Would you stand? Let's sing Victory in Jesus. loves you. Lord sought you and he bought you. And he has given us life. Hallelujah. The Lord loves us so much that he is with us all the time. He, he guides us. He carries us when we can't walk. And he never leaves us alone. is 
by shepherd and he goes before me defender behind me I won't fear I'm filled My cup, my cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. I won't be. Lord, we just come into your presence right now. And there are things on our heart. There are things in our lives. We just lift those up to you. And feel free at any time during this service to kneel down in the place where you're at. If you're in this building, you're welcome and invited to come to the altar. You're invited to raise your hands to the Lord, to close your eyes, to sit in His presence, to kneel in His presence. He always guides me through mountains, through valleys. He always guides. He always guides me through mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing, restores my soul by mercy and goodness. Mercy and goodness gives me assurance that I'll see his glory, I'll see his glory, glory face to My victory, my victory, 
my victory, my victory, my victory, my victory, my victory, oh yeah, alleluia, I am not alone, he's my comfort, always holds me At a loss for words, and the fine thing is, it's okay. The last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you say. you're in this place please let me stay and rest in your holiness word of god speak oh i'm finding myself in the midst of you, beyond the music, beyond the noise, all that I need is to be with you, and in the quiet, to hear your voice, word of God speak, would you pour down Your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. A word of God speak, would you pour down my grave, washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know he's in this place that you're in this place please let me stay and rest in your holiness word of god speak speak to us lord
Lord, we just bow our hearts before you right now. Thank you for calming the noise in our lives. And thank you for giving us the quiet. For your voice is in the quiet. We probably know the words of the first verse pretty well. Let's just sing that again. I'm finding myself at a loss for words. And the funny thing is, it's okay. Because the last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you would say, Lord. I'm finding myself at a loss for words. And the funny thing, and the funny thing is, it's okay. The last thing I need. The last thing I need is to be heard, is to be heard, but to hear, but to hear what you would say, what you would say, oh, word of God speak, would you pour down like, pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty. Be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God, see. Word of God, speak. seated. I want to release the children to uh, Children's Church now. We're going to uh, take the offering. We'll, we'll all say the prayer. So let's bow our heads and uh, pray to our mighty Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are here. We acknowledge your presence here, Father, and we acknowledge that we are your creation, and we look to you for guidance and for comfort Father, I am aware of the fact that there are those here who, with contentment in their heart and joy, but I'm also aware of the fact that there are those uh, that are hurting inside, and I just pray that you would touch them, Father. Touch them and let them know that you love them and that you care for them and that you are there. And Father, as we prepare to take our offering, I ask that your hand of blessing would be upon it. I ask that you would uh, give wisdom to those uh, do, who have to use this offering to, for your glory, for your purposes, uh, to meet the expenses of this church. Father, we just ask that you bless this offering. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, friends. For those of you that are online with us, the Lord bless you. Um, wow. 
Thank you, brother. Thank you uh, to Cindy and Robert as well for... Whew, sometimes it's just good to linger in worship. That, that, was, that was what I needed this morning. I am not alone. And that's a message. We need that message in these days, don't we? That's a promise from the Lord Jesus to his disciples and those that would follow in the footsteps of the disciples. That's a promise that we can take right out of the scripture and put our name to. I will not leave you. I won't abandon you. In fact, I'm making preparations for you, and I'll come back for you. And while he makes preparations because he is who he is, he can be with. We're about to enter in in, a, in just a couple of weeks into the Advent, and the Advent is the coming of the one who is known by many names, but one of the names is Emmanuel. You know what it means. God with. God with us. God with me. I am not alone. We are not alone. You are not alone. I love that song, Word of God Speak. We're going to take a few moments to look into the Scripture. But we want the Lord to speak to us out of the Word. It's the Holy Spirit that teaches the church. Not a pastor, no. It, it's not the person that speaks. Yes, they fill the role of teacher, and that's what I'm doing here today. But spiritual things are discerned by the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Right? And so we ask the Holy Spirit speak to us in a way that we can understand. Would you pray with me? That's my prayer this morning. Lord, as we're in your presence, we want you to speak. We speak all of the time. And I probably speak more than most, Lord. But I, a word from you is life. And that's what I want. That's what we want. Holy Spirit, would you speak to us this morning in a way that we could understand you? Give us courage to follow you so that you will be honored in all things. Amen. So as we head to Thanksgiving, I thought to myself, am I going to do a Thanksgiving message? And, and I thought, nah, but I kind of am, I kind of am, because what I want to talk about today is worry and fretting, those things that we're afraid of, because those things get in the way of our rejoicing, those things get in the way of our thanksgiving. Those things get in the way of our giving, our serving, and our loving. So in a sense, yes, I am going to talk about a few things that regard thanksgiving. But it's about identifying those things that might be hindering us. Is it possible that my worries and fears are hindering me? Is it possible that your worries and your fears are hindering you from taking your next right step of following the master? That's what we do. That's what disciple means, to follow. We never lead the Lord. Amen? Amen. We're made to follow. And yet our flesh wants to take the lead. But our flesh is so frail, isn't it? Is it possible that some of those things that I'm fretting about and worrying about are getting in, in my way of following my master? 
Worry can steal joy. Worry and fretting can steal our courage to take our next right step. It can steal our momentum and our hope and our thanksgiving. It can steal away and get in the way of doing good. It can get in the way of me following Jesus. Do things look different than you expected them to look? <laughs> oh no, Sean, they're just exactly like I planned for the last 40 years. <laughs> That's just one of those things, isn't it? Things can look so different than the way we expected them to look. So I want to tell you about two dreams that I had. I'm going to tell you a dream, we're going to read some scripture, and I'm going to tell you another dream. And I think, for me, they illustrate the same thing. When I was a new, old, rookie pastor, because I was never a young pastor. I started when I was 38, so, and you might go, 38, I look back, and 38, that was young. It did not seem young to me. I felt like an old rookie. I came out of working in higher ed administration at a college and we had discerned through the help of others and through the help of the Holy Spirit and the scriptures that the Lord wanted for us. Our next right step at that time in our life was to step aside from the vocation that I was in to enter into a vocation of pastoral ministry. And I, I don't want to imply that that is everybody's next right step. All Christians, their next right step is to follow what the Holy Spirit is putting before them at that moment. And aren't we glad that the Lord doesn't reveal the whole plan to us all at once? Otherwise, we would say, I'm out. Because there's no way I can climb that hill or traverse that path. In his kindness and wisdom, he reveals it step by step. There's a scripture in the Psalms that say about the Lord's word, your word is like a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Have you ever been out in a dark place and you had a flashlight, or as our friends in England would say, a torch? And you put it right where you need to take your next few steps. Sometimes the Lord, through the Spirit, through the Scriptures, through wise counsel, will just illuminate one or two next right steps. And it's usually then that we want to say, Lord, show me the path. Put that floodlight on, not just the next step or two. And then when the Lord does that, sometimes it's like, it's too much, Lord, just show me one step, right? But the Lord is able to illuminate. He's the light of the world. He's the light within each one of us that follows him. So we went from working at a university to pastoring, and I immediately felt like I have no transferable skills to do the work that I said that I would do, I have made a horrible mistake. <laughs> and it came to this time, this crescendo, where I was facing, and I felt like the church was facing, things that I had no clue about, didn't know how to lead in, and I was worrying, I was fretting, and it was getting in the way of my courage. It was getting in the way of my joy and my hope. It was even getting in the way of me taking my next right step as a shepherd in that particular flock. One night I went to sleep and I don't remember my dreams. They're all psychedelic or psychotic, right? Diane will say, did you remember what you dream? And I'm like, thankfully, no, right? She can remember her dreams. I'm like, how do you do that? Do you just wake up and start writing them? But I had a dream that I remembered. 
And it was right at this time after I had just committed to pastoring. We'd gone a few months, and I was in my dream riding in a plane. And isn't that fun to go through the TSA checkpoints? And traveling is just a dream, not. So in my dream, I'm in my seat in the air on a plane. And I hear the voice of not the captain, but a stewardess saying, is there anyone on the plane that knows how to fly a plane? <laughs> yeah, that's just probably... You, if you're going to hear that, you want it to not be in the air yet. And I... I in, in my dream, and I remember, this is, I knew there, when I woke up and I could remember it to this degree, this many years later, I knew it was a spiritual dream. And I'm sitting in my seat and my response to the voice was, I don't know how to fly a plane. I sure hope there is somebody that knows how to fly a plane. The next thing I know in my dream, I'm in the pilot's seat with the headset on and the windshield in front of me. I'm like, where's the pilot? I don't know how to fly a plane. And I'm trying to tell the stewardess who's behind me and the co-pilot, and they're not paying it. And I said, I don't know how to fly the plane. And I said that over and over. And finally, I hear in the headset, just listen to my voice, and I'll help you land safely. To which I said, I don't know how to fly this plane. And I heard again in the headset, just listen to my voice, and I'll help you to land this plane safely. And then I woke up, thank God. Now, what do you think that dream meant? Right? It's, this is not like logarithmic math. This is, thankfully, the Lord knows. Sean, I'm going to keep it real simple for you. One plus one means I got you. I woke up, and you might think, oh, I'm ready. I'm good. I still kept thinking. I don't know how to pastor this church. That's, in the, in the dream, it was flying a plane. Because when I got into the role that the Lord had led, led Diane and I into, things weren't how I expected. They didn't look the way that I expected. You might be in a place right now in your own life where things are not as you expected them to be. That happened to the Apostle Paul. He, as you know, was a missionary extraordinaire, a church planter extraordinaire. He'd gone on a mission trip with Barnabas. It had gone well. They planted church. They went back. And they had a missions conference and they told everybody about it. And a little while later, they said, hey, let's go do it again. Let's go visit those churches that we planted and plant some more. So they did. Paul this time went with Silas. You can find this story in Acts 15, 16. So they head out from Antioch where they're at. They're going west, and they're going to go north. And they discern the Holy Spirit tells Paul, don't go north. Well, that's, that's where we were going to go. Yeah, don't, don't go up north. So then they were going to go south. Don't go south. The Holy Spirit said, don't go south. If they go back east, they're just going home. And they kind of stall out at a place called Troas. And they wait. And Paul has a dream. And in the dream, there's a guy just over the water in Macedonia to the west. And he says to Paul in his dream, come over here and tell us about God. They'd been hanging out in Troas 
frustrated that their plans to go north and their plans to go south were put on the back burner by the Holy Spirit. Things didn't look the way they planned. He wakes up, he tells his group, I had this dream. They discern, that must mean we should go west. So they do. And their plan was to go to Philippi, to go to a synagogue in Philippi, to begin to tell them about Lord, the Lord Jesus being the fulfillment of the prophecies of the Messiah coming. They get to Philippi and it's not as they expected. There's not even 10 Jewish men in the city that would allow them to have a synagogue. That's, that's the, the least number of Jewish men that it took for a synagogue to be incorporated. There's no synagogue in Philippi. But he had a dream. There was a man standing a, saying, come over here. He comes over and there's no men. So they go down to the water to Riverfront Community Church. There was a group of women meeting down by the river. Because that's one of the places people would go to have church. And so there was a lady there named Lydia. She was a follower of Yahweh, not of Jesus. She wasn't a Jew, but she was a follower of the God of the Jews. Paul and his group go down. And you know what happened? It says there that God opened the eyes of Lydia's heart. And that began the church that was in Philippi. It was not what they expected. Paul went from excitement to confusion to discouragement to go across the river to find things not as he expected, but exactly how the Lord had anticipated it. Right? 15, 16 years later, Paul writes a letter to the church that has come up at Philippi that started with this woman, Lydia, who had the eyes of her heart opened by the Holy Spirit. He writes a letter to this now young church to encourage them, teach them how to stay the course when things don't look the way they expected. From that letter, I want to read you this from the fourth chapter of this letter to the Philippian church. We start in verse 4 of chapter 4 of Philippians. Paul is saying, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true. Fix your thoughts on what is honorable. Fix your thoughts on what is right and pure. Fix your thoughts on what is lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. The Philippians had a hard go of it. They were not popular amongst their fellow Greeks who had many gods and followed Caesar. 
They were often persecuted. They needed a word about staying the course and not letting their worries get in front of their doing good, following the Lord, staying the course. They needed strength. It's very possible that they, in their day, experience what we, in our day, experience, which is things just don't look the way I expected them to. What do we do when we're faced with something that is totally different than what we thought it would be like? So let's see if we can just harvest out of the Word. And if, if you're, like, like Dave said, there are some who are riding the top of the wave of rejoicing. Ride it out, friends. But you know, right, that that will be replaced in a cycle of riding the wave, but we'll visit the trough that's behind the wave. Sometimes we'll get tumbled like a washing machine after we come off the top of that wave. And like, Sean, aren't you supposed to encourage us? <laughs> that's just the way it is, isn't it? So here's what I would say. What do we do if fretting is getting in the way of our following? I want to encourage you to do these simple things. Write it down. Write down what you're fretting about. Put it, put it to paper. Put it into a voice memo. Tell somebody. Let them be your journal. Sometimes Diane will say, you're my journal today. I'm like, right on, honey. Like, W-R-I-T. Right, right on. Did you get that? Right on, honey. I'll be the journal today. If something has you fretting, name it. Because here's, here's a simple principle. If we can name it, Jesus can tame it. But if we let those things go unnamed in our life, man, they just... They sit there like growling, like I'm going to devour you if you get out of place. Name it. Write it down. Pray. Paul says that. Pray. Let God know. Let Him be your journal then. You journal it to Him. Lord, I'm worried. I don't know how to fly this plane. I... I don't know how to pastor this church. Then, follow that up by praying with someone else. Share the misery. <laughs> Share the fretting. Ask somebody, would you stand with me? We planted a tree at the house that we bought in Quincy, Washington. And we bought it kind of mature already, so I... I put a stake in the ground to strengthen it. I went to take the stake out years later. It was a little too late. I might as well have just put it in cement because it was by that tree forever and ever, amen. That's how it can be if we'll tell somebody, brother or sister, I, I, would you pray with me? I, could I just tell you what's, what's weighing me down? I prayed about it. I've written it down, but I would you pray with me? If you've done those things, now we'll be ready to fix our thoughts. Set our mind upon. On what? On truth, not lies. Because once you've named the beast, you'll begin to see the lie behind it, right? Just fix your thoughts on what is true. I know this. I didn't appoint myself to pastor that church. I know that. There were some other people just as crazy as me thinking I should do that. <laughs> I know that. That was the truth. I know that God spoke to Diane and I through the Scriptures and through wise counsel. 
Once you name it, things start lining up in truth, and you can say, that's a lie. I'm just not going to let that have sway today. Are you letting ha a lie have sway in your life right now? Write it down. Name it. And tame it with the truth. Set your mind. Fix your mind. Fix it on what's honorable, not dishonorable. There's so much dishonorable stuff in our world that begs for our attention. Have you ever just gotten to the place where I'm turning off the news right now. It's just not helping me focus on honorable things. I'm not talking about being uninformed. I'm just saying, what's the flow into your life? What's the flow into our life? Fix our thought on what's right, not the stuff that's wrong. Fix it on pure, not impure, lovely, not ugly, admirable, not deplorable, excellent, not low. We settle for the low so often, don't we? But when we fix our thoughts, when we set our mind, it's amazing how our perspective will change in those things that owned us, that we were fretting about, have less power. Let's set our minds on things that are worthy of praise, not worthless. And who is chief amongst us who is worthy of praise? Does a name come to your mind? Say it again. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus is worthy of praise. Amen? Amen? Amen. So when we're fixing our mind, setting our mind on things that are worthy, we're setting our mind on Jesus. And then, this is going to sound like you're reading the back of a shampoo bottle. Pray again. Pray again with someone else. The Lord asks us to get together with one another. Sometimes it's so you can be a stake beside me to hold me firm when the roots are just a little shaky. And sometimes so I can do the same for you. Now the second dream, and we'll close with a scripture and a song. Second dream, after me not being a pilot, but finding myself in the pilot seat shortly after that because I continued to fret. I continued to get tumbled in the wave rather than ride the top of it. I had another dream and I remembered it and it was clearly to me from God. I guess I needed two dreams that time, not one. I've climbed some mountains before. I've even done a little bit of rock climbing. I'm not particularly comfortable with a small little rope holding a big little me. But that's where I was in my dream. In my dream, I was on the face of a granite cliff that ran thousands of feet up, and I don't know how I got thousands of feet up, but I still had more to go. It was a sheer face granite cliff. And I thought, in my dream, I remember it clearly, I thought these words, I'm going to die. I am, I'm going to let go. I'm going to fall. I'm going to die. And that's exactly what happened. Have a great Sunday, everybody. <laughs> no, that's not what happened. I'm on this cliff, and on top of that, I'm in a whiteout. Have you ever been at six, seven, eight thousand feet and been whited out? It, it's like clouds, rain clouds come in and it is completely disorienting and you feel like you are lost. That's where I was. I'm clinging, I have a foothold and a foothold and a handhold and a handhold and all I can see is right there, the granite right in front of me. And in my dream, I, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I like to repeat the positive. <laughs> and I hear a voice. 
and the voice says, there's a handhold just above your right hand. And I, I can, and I'm, I'm like this, and it's just right there. And I can see it. And instead of going, sweet, I said, I'm going to die. I can only, I can't see anything else other than that. And I hear the voice again. Take that handhold. And then the next handhold will come visible to you. You know what I wanted at that time? Lord, I want a flood lamp. I want you to light the whole way. Not really. I want you to get me off of this rock is what I wanted. So I did this. And then the next, and then I woke up. What do you think the Lord was trying to communicate to me in that? Here's how I'd put it. I got you. I got you. Paul is stuck in Troas. And he's the missionary. He's the lead. He's the guy. And he's stuck in Troas and doesn't know where to go. And he has a dream and he goes, he follows it, and then it doesn't look like he thinks it's going to look. God didn't tell him ahead of time, there's a lady there named Lydia. I'll be opening the eyes of her heart. She will provide you and your, work, your missionary team housing and food. She'll take care of that. I'll take care of you through her. She'll become one of the, the pillars of that church. There'll be a church that's birthed here. He didn't say all of those things. He just wanted Paul to take his next right step. So when Paul writes to them years later from prison, from prison, he's essentially saying, God has you. Don't fret. He's got you. You don't need to fret. Take these next right steps. Write down the things that are bothering you. Pray. Pray together. Fix your thoughts on good things that will strengthen you. Pray again. Pray again together. And remember, I got you. Paul had said at the beginning of his letter to these Christians in Philippi, he said these words, Right in the very first chapter, the, almost the first few verses of his letter, I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. He who began a good work in you is faithful and will complete the work in you that he began he says to these these Christians who are trying to overcome their fears to follow Jesus in difficult times when things don't look the way they wanted or expected them to look he says my God's going to supply for all of your needs according to his own riches not yours what God begins he finishes and if you're fretting that it's over it's only over when the one who started it says that it's over right certainly not Satan who wants to whisper three two one zero and ah, I win Wrong. Satan is not the timekeeper. The Lord Jesus oversees that. Are you fretting about something? Is that fretting keeping you from taking your next step of following Jesus? He's not done. Nor are you. Would you pray with me? 
as you bow your heads to pray, I, I want, if something has come to your mind that you could say, I know exactly what I'm worried about. I know exactly what I'm fretting about. Would you just get that in your mind as if you are writing it on the journal of your mind. You're naming it. It's before your mind's eye. It even feels weighty to have it there before you. Lord, you see that very thing that we're naming. You see that very thing that we've been worrying about. We want to settle it so we can take our next step in following you, in serving you, in doing good, in giving thanks. So Lord, would you take this thing that we've named that we're worrying about, would you take it from us? We believe what you said, Lord. You will finish what you start. So, Lord, we're in your hands and we give to you that thing that we're worrying about. And we do that in faith in the name of our Master, Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless you as you worship with this song. God bless you, friends. sing it to him now you you'll be faithful to complete it you'll be faithful to complete it he who started the work will be faithful to complete it in me the faithful one and he sees and knows the name of the things that maybe you've named or sh are struggling to name he even sees that it may be that you would benefit from ha having someone even now today before you leave stand with you to pray with you so um, Diane and I will be on this side and Dave I'm wondering if you would be willing to to come down here Don and Gail, would you be willing as well just to come? And, and if you want to pray with somebody, there are people that will just be ready to pray with you. If you would like to 
take a moment to pray. And if you're good to go and move into your next right step of following the Lord Jesus, I say the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you and make his face to shine on you and give you strength and peace. If you want to pray before you go, come on down. Dave, would you just be willing to just put some music over the top of that? Friends, the Lord bless you. Happy Thanksgiving. You're dismissed.